Okay. What we want to do for FT8 is use WSJTX. You FT8 people, do you, do you all have WSJTX already set up for your own call sign? In which case, you have an icon on your desktop for WSJTX. What we're going to do is give you a new icon that is going to start WSJTX, but set up with the, the call sign of W4F. So let me grab the WSJTX icon. And the first thing you're going to do is copy it. And the easiest way to copy it is to right click it, select copy, and then find yourself a place on your screen and right click that and say paste. I've got a copy of my WSJTX that says copy. So now you're going to right click this new icon that you created, click properties. And I'm going to share the properties window and tell you what I'm going to do. All right, so I want to do two things. First of all, what I want to do, your icon probably looks like this in the target. Type in some magic here. Uh, you would have to go on a diet of ice cream and pickles for six months to try to just guess the magic. Okay. Fortunately, uh, I found uh, the answer someplace. Uh, you're going to send a parameter into WSJTX that will cause it to create new set of properties for what you're going to be doing. And the way to do that is you type in, after the EXE, you leave a space, and you want two hyphens, one, two. All right, that's a little hard to see, so it's two hyphens. It has okay. to be two. Then you type rig-name equals W4F would be a good choice for what to call it. Okay. That's the magic. Let me say it again. I took everything up through the EXE in the target just is fine in a space hyphen hyphen rig hyphen name equals W4F. Hey, Doug, before the session, I tried doing that from the uh, document posted on the uh, our web page. Mm -hmm. And I think the part that might have done me in was not having that space before the hyphen hyphen. I'm hoping that was my only problem, but we'll see. Okay. Yes, you need the space. The other thing you want to do is go to the general tab and rename the icon you know, W4F or something like that, and then say, okay, that closed the window. But now what I can do, open up this new icon, and I'll get, get a WSJTX window. And this is the window that I want to configure for working WSJTX. All right, so I'm going to say File Settings. Now it's already got the call sign that I want, so that's good. But I've got to set the radio. Well, actually, it seems to have gotten the right settings for that. And the audio, which tells it where to find the audio drivers. And you've already s figured out what those are because you've done the setup before, right? One thing I want to suggest to you, especially if you're going to be working Foxhound, is in this box that says split operation. If you have cat control, pick fake it. What does that do? What fake it does is change your transmit frequency so that the audio frequency that you're uh, trying to send will be around 1500 hertz. If you pick a transmit frequency of say 350 hertz, 350 hertz will have a bazillion harmonics that are in your passband. And if there's a little bit of nonlinearity, you can splatter multiple copies of your signal. However, if you move the transmit frequency down enough, you can actually transmit 1500 hertz, which does not have that problem. And fake it makes that happen automatically back and forth between transmit and receive. So that's, that's a good thing to know about because if you're doing Foxhound, the rule is you transmit below 500 hertz. And let's go to 20 meter FT8 here. And get in the right mode, which, and by the way, uh, WSJTX defaults to JT9, which isn't very interesting for us. You get it in the correct mode here, and it changed the frequency automatically to 14074, and then I have to set the bins 
the pixel like this. Okay, so that's all good now, and I'm actually seeing what I expect to see. Now, if you want to do Foxhound, you want to go to File, Settings, and pick Advanced, and you pick Special Operating Event, and you would be the Fox. Okay, you see the Fox log. You need to tune away from the regular frequencies. So maybe it looks like 14085 is open. I can't go ahead and do it, but I would be set to go now. And you see that WSJTX is ready to send to CQ. And I can't do that because I can't trans transmit W4F. That's how you would get into it. And we will do it live at 10 o'clock on the first two days of the events with Zoom call. By then, Bill will have given me enough coaching that I'll be able to do, actually do Foxhound. That's how you would get into it. So, um, no, very good uh, explanation. It's always good to learn <laughs> new stuff. What, what, what are the, so you looked at your waterfall to find uh, uh, an open frequency? Yes. A and uh, what's the range limitation? Because I imagine you, 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 you've been very close to the existing uh, FTE uh, band. So how, how far uh, you can go to find uh, uh, an open uh, spot? Uh, the phone band starts at 14.2. So as long okay. as you are below that, uh, you're okay. But the, the typical thing that folks do is go to 14085, 14090, okay. 14095, you know, something like that. Folks who have pan adapters uh, are likely to just take a look and see where there's a good spot. But you want the frequency to be kind of a round number because the rule for Fox Hound is the following. The Fox transmits uh, below 500 hertz. Uh, the hounds call above 1,000 hertz. I've got uh, 500 hertz unaccounted for, right? Well, the way it works is the hounds call above 1,000 hertz. The fox answers below 500 hertz, and if all goes well, that's the end of the story. However, uh, if the fox calls a hound and does not hear the hound's answer, uh, eventually he's going to stop calling. The software will move the hound between 500 and 1,000 hertz so he can keep trying to complete the cue cell. Those are the fox hound rules. Anybody? Doug, how many contacts can you work simultaneously in fox hound? Uh, the short answer is um, I think it would go up to, no, I think I've seen people go up to six signals. Let's see if I can find that in the settings. There is a control for that, and I will have to find it. I don't know where it is offhand, but the fox gets to decide how many simultaneous uh, signals he will transmit, because remember, they're all audio signals. And, you know, you've got a 3K bandwidth. You can transmit lots of signals. In fact, the signals are, I think, uh, 50 hertz wide, so below 500 hertz, there's plenty of room. But uh, your power is going to divide by the number of signals that you transmit. So that's, that's the trade-off. But uh, two, three, four are common, and I think I've seen them go up to six. Uh, also, the 73 signal is uh, short enough that uh, the foxhound mode can, can cram a 73 and another call into the same package and send it to the software. So you get a little bit of leverage that way as well. Yeah, I've seen that. I, as a matter of fact, I was looking for a 73 and didn't get it, and I realized that's what had happened. Yeah, I didn't realize that makes sense that the power divides, but that seems like that would be something, you know, if you're running a rig with not much power, you'd want to keep that down fairly low. And you're going to find that this is not a contest. This is a special event station. So you're going to have maybe some folks piling up, but you're not going to get uh, 200 folks piling up. And what will happen is on the Fox's uh, band map, he's going to see everybody who's calling CQ, and he can manage who he calls CQ2 in groups of people he wants to call CQ2. So it is legitimate to call, uh, call that station more than one time. Uh, in fact, it'll automatically shut off at 10 times. 
because it just sets up in the queue and the guy is just sitting there. He's not looking up the map, uh, up the band. He literally is looking in his receive uh, frequency uh, and he'll see all the people that uh, are calling him. Are we going to go up to like 10 meters and practice uh, on 10 o'clock on the 18th? Is that our 10th? Well, we're going to go somewhere and, and practice on the, you know, on the uh, first two days of the contest. So that's why it's the 18th and the 19th, because I figured some people wouldn't be available on Friday. You know, so, so we're going to do it twice. And actually, I think we might even do it on 20 meters, because um, what I'm hoping will happen is that, uh, you know, if I play fox for a while you guys will practice calling me and then one of you will decide to be the fox and i can call you and then people with pan adapters will see all this happening and we'll get some things going but we'll see what happens yeah that's what i was thought would do is, is that we get real practice doing this between ourselves uh, i'm guessing that out there on youtube there's probably some uh videos of people doing this is that Probably a good guess. I would say that's probably a good guess. All right, because that's just the way I kind of get stuff in my head, you know, is mm -hmm. just. Sure. Yeah, okay. Doug, quickly for, for FT8, uh, can you show how to export the ADIF file? Yes, thank you. I need to do that. So it automatically creates the log. You don't have to do anything to get the log created. Okay. Okay, but you do have to find it. That's actually pretty easy. So let me share my screen again. And all you have to do is go here to file and open the log directory. And the file that you want is wsjtx.log.adi. It's this one here. By the way, you're seeing it with a funny icon to the left. Funny icon is from a program called ADIF Master, which is freeware. And it's a file editor for the ADIF format. So if uh, you mm -hmm. want to take a look at the log and manipulate it, that's a good program to install. And I suspect for those of you that just created the new uh, uh, instance of WSJT, you don't see that file because you have not transmitted. Therefore, mm -hmm. you don't have created an ADIF file at this point. Right, and I haven't transmitted either, so I faked it by moving a copying one that I already had from another directory so I could show you where to look for it and what to look for. Um, I use a Microbitix, and uh, it tails off uh, at 1,000 hertz, at 500 hertz. It's not doing well at all, um, and I don't use a cat. As I understand it, when you do fox and hound, You've got 500 hertz between your uh, transmit and receive. So I assume that means that when I transmit, I could run my transmit up to 1,000 or 1,500, but then I would be listening 500 above that. And, and of course, without a cat control, then I do that manually on my microbitics. So I can actually set my frequency anywhere I want. Does that sound reasonable or have I got this messed up? That sounds right, but you know, you're going to be doing a lot of switching back and forth, so good luck with that. You do not have to use Foxhound. That was my next question. Yeah, hey, those so, of you that have an ICOM radio, or certainly the ICOM 7300, you may want to look at what's called your tone control. Uh, I can walk you through this maybe if, uh, after the session, but because uh, it's really specific to ICOM folks. But uh, in ICOM, there is a setting that allows you or is defaulted for uh, the bandwidth transmit and receive. It may be more narrow than what you want for Foxhound. You know, think what happens. Uh, most people operate with some minimal bandwidth uh, when they're transmitting because if you will, if you have 100 watts and you transmit it within uh, maybe 2000 Hertz, you get more punch than if you spread it out, out to 3,000 hertz. Uh, certainly that's what I do when I'm doing any contesting, is I, I concentrate my signal. So I cut off the lows and I cut off the highs. So in the ICOM 7300, if anybody has one, if you wanna walk through that, I can do that afterwards. The other thing, Doug, uh, you, I, you didn't mention it, but uh, your colors of your 
receive uh, band activity may look a little bit weird to you because you're starting fresh and brand new and you may want to go into colors off of settings and uh, the default, take some of the defaults off the colors. Like for example, you don't care about continents and you don't care about uh, uh, new grid squares, et cetera, et cetera. So you may only really want to uh, highlight your call and highlight CQs and let everything be uh, checked off on the colors. Thank you. Hey, thanks, yeah, Mike. We'll check that at some point. All right, everybody had enough? Yep. No, it was good. Uh, yeah, great. thank you good so fun. much. Yeah, this is great, Doug. Great. This is great explanations, very clear. And, and Mike and everyone who worked on this. It's really, really helpful. Thank <laughs> you.